QuickBooks Online 2024 Rental Income Estimate and Customer Deposit. Get ready and some coffee because the accounting team is on hand with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars 2024 QuickBooks Online sample company file we set up in a prior presentation. Opening up the major financial statement reports the way we do every time. Reports on the left in the favorites. We're going to be right clicking on that balance sheet so we can open it in a new tab. Right click the profit and loss, the PL open link in a new tab. Same with the trustee trial balance. Let's go to those tabs up top and let's close the hamburger. Change the range. We're going for 01, 01, 24, 02, 28, 24. First two months of, 224, of 24. Dropping it down so we can do a month by month, side by side, run that report. Next, tapping to the right, same process. Hamburger, close it. Change range. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product, because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. 0101-24 tab, 02-28-24 tab, dropping down so we can go month by month, side by side, run it to refresh it, tap it to the right, close that third hamburger. It's a hamburger hat trick, scrolling up. We're going to range change going from 010124 tab 022824. And then we're going to select the drop down, say month by month, side by side, run it once again. Let's go back to the balance sheet discussing our process here. We started a new a revenue source of income in the business. We originally were selling guitars and then we added the, uh, the guitar lessons to what we're going to do as well. But then the neighborhood went to crap and we had to put st like w stuff on the doors so people don't break in and steal our stuff and bars and everything. And our beautiful shop got kind of uglified so people don't come in as much and they don't look like the guitar lessons possibly as much. But we still have all these guitars. So then we're like, maybe we'll do rental guitars. We have the we'll just rent out the guitars and we can have another revenue stream that way. Uh, as well. And this will be similar to possibly other rental activities such as like renting property, for example, in which case you might collect a security deposit up front. So now we are once again going to get paid before we actually do the work. So you will recall, I won't go through the whole thing again, but quick look at the flow chart. This is a desktop uh, flow chart, even though we're in the online system because we're just looking at the flow of the forms and normally in the revenue cycle, we would expect at some point, usually at the end of the process, to have money come in for goods and services that we provide. The flow usually goes this way with the arrows, but sometimes it might go the other way, such as our case here, where we're going to say when someone calls in, we will make an estimate and then we want to collect money up front before the actual rental property takes place so that we can lock them in to actually commit to renting the stuff. Otherwise, we'll rent it to someone else or possibly sell it if we can in the meantime. And then when they come in, uh, we will finish the transaction and record the sale. And at that time, you'd probably still want a security deposit as well until they return uh, the merchandise. But we're just going to go with the scenario we have now with the with the estimate. So we've set up the items. We've already set up the items to do this because we're imagining someone's going to call in and they're going to request 
band equipment so they can piss off their neighbors. So they want like a whole band set so they can be really loud and and uh, piss off. And, and we're like, that's what we do here. And so we're going to make an estimate. But we want the guy that's working in the shop who basically sleeps under the counter until, you know, someone calls. It's like that, you know, so any case, we're going to have. And so when they call, we want that person to be able to fill out the estimate as easily as possible. So we set up our items. It's similar to if someone was going to bring him the guitars in the shop, right? The, the person at the front of the register doesn't know much about the accounting behind the scenes, but they can ring up the product pretty good. Even you can ring up the product these days, right? And, and the self checkouts and anything. And I, I ring up stuff at the grocery stores. I don't know what's going on. I just scan the thing and then I scan my card and then I, I leave. <laughs> and that's <laughs> any case. So if we go to the first tab and we go, what we did is we set up in the sales area and the products and the services, I closed the hamburger. We set up our rental items and we put them in their custom category here. And we said that this is what we tell our, our person that works at the shop. We've got the new revenue stream. And th if they want to rent something, they have to rent the entire band set. They can't rent like one guitar because that's not worth our time. They ha it'll still cost them for the entire like band set. And then if they want to add to it, they can add other rental items on top of that if they want to up the up the quality of their rental. So we have this baseline amount and then they can add more. And the guy that sleeps under the counter and occasionally rings stuff up is like, OK, I totally got that. It's easy. That's easy. I can do that. And so we're like, OK, so then we're going to we're going to imagine someone calls in. So we're going to hit the drop down. Someone calls in and they want rental property. The guy wakes up from under the counter and is like, oh, dude, are we being shot again? Is someone looting my store again in California? I'd call the cops, but they don't care. But whatever. I'll just know it's someone wants band equipment. So we're like, OK, let's go to the estimate over here. And we're going to say that it's going to be a new customer. And so then we're going to say, we're just going to make a generic customer number five, adding a new customer. We're just going to say, this is going to be customer number five. Once again, with the genericness and we're going to go, okay. And then this happens on 02, let's say 27 to four and expiration date. I'm not going to put one tags. We don't have any tags. And then they're like, what do you want, man? And I'll, and he's like, wait you have to have wait before you start you want a couple good you have to have the basic band set so let me tell you what that has and we can go from there so the basic band set has two guitars a drum set and a bass and an amp it, and it's two thousand dollars we're going to say for the weekend or anything and there's no sales tax on it because it's a service item is that what you want? And they're like, yeah, but we want to really piss off the neighbors. So we want an extra, uh, an extra guitar or a couple extra guitars. So we'll say more guitars. Oh, dude, I totally get it. The guy says from behind the counter is like, I will, we have added guitars, but they cost more. So we're going to put on two of these guitars. That's another $50, dude. And then and then they also want an, an added amplifier. Oh, totally. I would have put that in the base package if it was for me, but they don't listen to me here. I just sleep under the counter. So we're going to say, okay, add an amplifier. That's totally worth it, man. Four amplifiers. Yeah. Yeah. Can I come to the party? That sounds good. All right. So here's going to be our estimate. So now we're at 2,260. So, so now when we record the estimate, it's not going to record anything. That's going to be an internal uh, document, but we can use the estimate to then try to calculate how much of a down payment we want, which we might have a general system of saying, well, you got to get a 10% down payment or a 20% down payment or something like that. So the dude, the guy on the phone's like, it costs 2260 and you're going to come in next Saturday, but just to make sure that like you do come in because we have other people that totally want our rental stuff too. We would like a down payment and, and then we can give them the down payment amount. So let's go ahead and save this. If we were going to send it, we could send it here 
but I'm just going to save and close it. So that hasn't recorded anything. Thus far, if I go into the sales area and the all sales, we can look at the estimates now. So I can look at the estimate. And so there's our customer five estimate. And then if I go into the, the customer information, we can also look at the estimates here and we see customer five has our estimate. So the estimate is up and running. It's currently in the status of pending. So now we're going to, we're going to say that they accept it. So we're going to change it from pending now, which we can do by selecting it. And then I'm going to say the more actions drop down. And I'm going to say that now it has been accepted. So we're going to mark it as accepted. And so we could put by and the date, but I'm just going to keep it at that. We're going to say, okay. And the next thing we could do then is convert it to an invoice. We'll do that not yet though because we're going to do that once the once the actual uh, transaction takes place so now we're going to be saying that we need a uh, down payment so we're going to imagine the down payment here's where we get paid before we do the work because we haven't actually provided the rental yet therefore if i hit the drop down we can't really enter an invoice because that would record revenue and we haven't gotten the revenue yet and we can't record the normal sales receipt because again, that would be recording revenue. So the method that we're gonna use is, and we did these two methods for a, a prepayment in a prior presentation, and I've made the argument from an internal standpoint, I think QuickBooks works quite well with the receive payment method, which will usually decrease, and it will decrease accounts receivable, but it's usually tied to an invoice. Now we have no invoice to tie it to, which means it'll create a negative receivable or credit balance for uh, this customer, which isn't exactly right from a financial statement perspective, but it works quite well from an internal bookkeeping perspective. And we can do adjusting entries at the end of the period to properly adjust it if we need to for external reporting purposes. Although we might not need to if we're just doing a sole proprietor tax return because the income statement will be properly recorded. All right, so let's go to the receive payment and say, okay, we got to get a down payment. So now we're going to say this is going to be for customer number five. And we're going to say it says customer five's payment doesn't have an open invoice. There's no invoice to tie to down here. So we'll save this payment as a credit to your customer since you don't have any open invoices. If you want to record this payment uh, without an invoice, use the sales receipt. So that's perfect. That's what we wanted to do. We want it to make a credit for us that we can then apply to. So I'm going to say this is as of 022827, let's say 24 payment method. I'm just going to say cash. And we're going to put it once again into the payment to deposit instead of into uh, the checking account directly. And I'm going to say it's for $200. That's just our normal process. So now what's this going to do it's a receive payment form that decreases accounts receivable usually decreases and ties out to a specific invoice this time no but still decreases accounts receivable resulting in a negative or credit balance for the sub ledger account by customer for customer number five the other side is going to go into a cash account in our case the payments to deposit let's save it and close it and check it out so it says you didn't select an invoice. We'll save this payment as a credit. That's great. That's what we want you to do. QuickBooks, do that. You do that. And so then if I go to the to the tab to the right and I run it. So now we're going to say that if I go into the deposit, we have our deposit there, $200. And so there that is deposit made. Dishes are done, dude. What, is, what does that have to say? I don't know. That's from a movie. It just sounds cool. But I'm going to go, <laughs> dishes are done, dude. The transaction is, okay. So we're going into the accounts receivable and here as well, there's our payment. So that looks good. Mui B to the N. Let's go back. We can also see the sub ledger. So if I go to the tab to the right, right click on it, and I'm going to duplicate that tab so that we can see a sub ledger report, which we will create by going to the reports on the left. Ham boogie, close it, scrolling down. We see who owes you money. We want the classic sub ledger of customer balance detail, opening that. And range is good. So we have customer number five. There it is. Notice it has a negative balance in it. 
That's not exactly proper because that would mean that we owe them money, which we do, or we owe them the service, which we will do. And so it should be a positive liability, not a negative receivable. However, the subledger works great uh, from an internal perspective because this subledger is tied to the customers. And so it worked good from a bookkeeping perspective. Again, if that was outstanding at the end of the year and I needed to adjust it, possibly not for taxes for a small Schedule C, but for external reporting, then we can simply do an adjusting entry at that time uh, and, and fix it. So, uh, and so that's gonna be the idea. Internally, by the way, the total AR then, 21,976.50 is positive. If I go to the balance sheet, uh, but the, the dates are wrong. Uh, wait a second. What is happening? 21,976.50 over here. 21. Yeah, that's right. I don't know what I did. I got messed up. I'll go to the tab to the left. And then if we look at this internally, we can now see that we have the estimate is is now in place it's been accepted so that is great and if i if i click on it we can see the process here and then we also have the payment so if a, if it was another person that came in like we have two two people that sleep under the counter and occasionally ring stuff up or you know watch people as they loot our store because they can't do anything because we don't want to get sued or anything so if that ha if the other guy is in there even he could look at this and be like, oh, dude, I see what my friend did the other day. Yeah, so yeah, he what he did is he made an estimate for this one, and then he took a, a deposit, a payment, and you currently have a credit balance, Mr. Customer 5. So that could be applied to the rental that you're going to have once you, do the, once you actually do the rental process. However, we will pick up that part of the story next time. For now, what we want to do is just make the, the deposit. So I'm going to go to the balance sheet. You'll recall that we have that uh, $200 in payments to deposit. Let's say that's the only money we got by the end of the night. And so we're just going to transfer it from the payments to deposit into the checking account because we're, we're taking that to the bank. We're getting our armed escort to go a block down, the go a block away so that we don't so and then we're going to take that to the bank to safeguard it in the vault so we're going to go okay let's go to the first tab and then hit the drop down on the plus button and we're going to use the good old deposit form and we're saying we're going to take our 200 dollars to the bank and we're going to put it 227 so that looks good and uh okay and then here's the deposit we don't have to combine it with anything else but of course if we had other sales at that same time then we would want to combine the sales with the other cash sales so that we deposit them at one time so that we can make the bank reconciliation as easy as possible. And that's the process. If it was a credit card, you would do the same thing. We would group the cash together, deposit it together, and then group the credit card payments according to the different financial institutions and the way they expect to put it into our bank account which might include us having to make bank service fees that would reduce the amount possibly like say five dollars because maybe they're going to take five bucks out for the fee and it's going to actually hit our bank account at 195 instead of 200 so if that was the case in the case of a credit card you have to figure out how you're going to do that otherwise you're going to end up with a mess as the bank feeds come in and you can't tie it out to the deposits because you put the deposits in a different order and didn't record the fees because the credit card company is doing something crazy and you got to work what we got to do that so what's this going to do it's going to increase the checking account the other side's going to be uh decreasing the undeposited funds let's save it let's close it and let's check it out let's go to that balance sheet and we're going to go into run it fairly impressive uh been working on his balance sheet skills so we're going to say that uh wait not an accounts receivable we know that the checking account then went up so 200 200 dollars on the checking account the other side in the payments to deposit back down to zero so we see it going in and out that looks good Let's go to our trusty trial balance now and just see where we stand and we'll continue the story next time. So we're gonna run the trusty TB 
And this is where we are at. If you're following along, if your numbers tie out, great. If not, try changing the date range. See if it's a date issue. We got the balance sheet on top of the income statement, starting with the assets. These are all assets. Checking account, accounts receivable, inventory, investments, payment to deposit, prepaid insurance, accumulated depreciation, contra asset, tied intimately. Part of was broken out from the furniture and equipment or property plants and equipment. That's what the company owns in dollars, not units. And the flip side of that coin is who has claim to those assets, or at least the value of those assets, third party liabilities, including accounts payable, the visa company, the bank, in other words, the government for sales tax, the bank, because we took out a loan from them, the government for payroll taxes, unearned revenue, if we had any unearned uh, revenue that we haven't earned yet. And then we have our claim to our assets of the business, in the owner investments, similar to the corporate stock, if it was a corporation and owner's equity, similar to retained earnings, if a corporation, and then the entire income statement, part of equity, which are credit, which are sales or revenue, minus the debits, which are expenses, which would result in a net credit balance if we had income and not a loss, which is part of, in essence, equity and would roll into, therefore, the owner's equity or the retained earnings if was a corporation. And we can see that by just bringing it up one year. QuickBooks does it automatically, 010125, 010125 on a year by year, not a month by month basis. And you can see it rolls it right into that equity, similar to retained earnings. That amount there, owner's equity, like retained earnings, representing the income over the life of the business, which has not yet been distributed out in the form of draws if it was a partnership or the form of dividends if it were a corporation.